Hello teacher, hello students, welcome to today's lesson on the methods of communications. In our previous lesson, we discussed the meaning of communication and business communication. Particularly, we've discussed its meaning and process. Let me remind you some of the main points of our previous lesson. We discussed that communication or business communication is transmission of information and understanding through the use of common symbols. We also noted that the basic elements of the communication process are encoding, the message, the medium, decoding, the receiver, noise, and feedback. Let's begin today's lesson with the methods of communication. We can classify methods of communication into communication by media, communication by degree of formality, and communication by direction. In today's lesson, we will explain and demonstrate only two of the methods. These are communication by media and communication by degree of formality. Communication by media is the method of device you use to speak or communicate. Based on media, communication can be classified into verbal or spoken communication, nonverbal communication which refers to facial expression, tone of voice, physical presentation, gestures, and written communication. Verbal communication is a type of communication that involves use of words for communicating. Words could be used in face-to-face -face interview, via a telephone conversation, in a training exercise where you are given verbal instruction, and in one-way communication such as radio advertisement. Verbal communication is one way for people to communicate face-to-face. -face. Some of the key components of verbal communication are sound, words, speaking, and language. Face-to-face -face communication is when two or more persons communicate with each other through oral media in their physical presence. Now I want you to do the following exercise by discussing with the students sitting next to you. You have three minutes. What are the advantages and disadvantages of spoken or verbal communications?
Students, have you discussed the advantages and disadvantages of spoken or verbal communications? Good. Let's now provide you with the advantages and disadvantages of spoken or verbal communication so that you can compare your answers. The spoken word or verbal communication is more rapid and more flexible in terms of adjusting to circumstances. It is useful when you need to convey a short message quickly, easily adaptable to many diverse situations. But it lacks the permanence of the written word and what the listener hears is often not what is meant and repeatable. I hope you are clear with verbal communication. Let's proceed to nonverbal communication. What do you think is nonverbal communication? Nonverbal communication is a mode of communication that dominantly uses body language and various other physical gestures as a means for communicating. Body language is one of the most powerful ways that humans can communicate non-verbally. Students, as you may observe from your locality, the spoken word can be supported by non-verbal communication, such as body language. This will reinforce the spoken message. Now I want you to list the different non-verbal languages that you use to communicate in your locality. Do the exercise in one minute individually. I hope you've listed the different nonverbal languages that you have accustomed to. The following video clip shows some of the different nonverbal languages. The human face is extremely expressive, able to express countless emotions without saying a word. For example, the facial expressions for happiness, sadness, anger, surprise, fear, and disgust are nonverbal communications. A hand signal showing the thumbs up expresses an agreement or an encouragement to someone. We intensively recognize what body language is telling us. Now let us discuss the other classification of communication media which is written communication. Written communication is a type of communication that only includes written forms for communicating. Written communication is formal, permanent, and must be kept properly in the organization. Now I want you to discuss with the students sitting next to you the advantages of written communication. You have two minutes.
I hope you've discussed the advantages of written communication. Written communication helps in laying down apparent principles, policies, and rules for running of an organization. It is a permanent means of communication. Thus, it is useful where record maintenance is required. Written communication is more precise and explicit. It provides ready records and references. Do you think written communication has any disadvantage? Yes, it has. Some of the disadvantages of written communication are It is impersonal. People may not always read them. It does not answer questions and there is no immediate feedback. Students, let us discuss the second method of communication, that is, communication by degree of formality. Based on the degree of formality, communication can be classified as formal and informal. Formal communication is arranged, approved, or official. Formal communications are mostly of the written type, such as company manuals, handbooks, magazines, bulletins, and annual reports. It is often designed to meet the specific needs of the organization. Formal communication has its own advantages. The major advantages of formal communication are the following. It is systematic and orderly flow of ideas. The source of communication can be easily located. It provides support to authority of supervisor over subordinate. It facilitates control. Informal communication is unofficial, unplanned communication outside the organization's formal channels. Informal communication is based on the informal relationships that grow up in an organization. It may be conveyed by a nod, a glance, a gesture, a smile, and even silence. Some of the examples for informal communication are the following. A joke in written form passed around the office. A consumer wants to buy a used car, but she knows little about the construction of cars, so she wants a discussion with a friend mechanic to estimate its current condition. Students, I hope you're familiar with formal communication and informal communication. Now it is time for you to do the third activity which you have to do individually in two minutes. Is it correct to equate formal communication with the written form and informal communication with the spoken and nonverbal forms? Explain by example.
Have you tried to answer the question? Good. Now compare your answer with the following. No, it is not correct to equate formal communication with the written form and informal communication with the spoken and nonverbal forms. For example, when a superior warns the subordinate by means of the spoken word, it is formal communication. In addition, if a joke is in written form and passed around the office, it is informal communication. Let me wind up today's discussion by summarizing the main points. Today, we've learned about the methods of communication. We discussed about communication by media, which consists of verbal communication, nonverbal communication, and written communication. Based on the degree of formality, it can be classified as formal and informal communication. Students, in our next lesson, we will discuss communication by direction. This brings us to the end of our lesson today. See you next time in another topic. Until then, goodbye teacher. Goodbye students. Thank you.